So I'm gonna promise you two things here. One, what I'm gonna talk about in this video, about One Piece, you're not gonna find it anywhere else on the internet. I know that's a bold claim to make, saying that my video is unique. Are you sure about that? So in the end, you be the judge of that. And two, by the end of this video, you will, hopefully, have a newfound appreciation for One Piece as a shonen series and Eiichiro Oda's creative endeavor. With that, hello and welcome back my filthy weebs, it's your friendly neighborhood degenerate Kaishi, spoilies for One Piece, that is your obligatory warning. Now One Piece is the longest running anime series in history that still has the original cast of characters and a continuous story. It has been almost 24 years since the manga was published, can you believe that? As of writing this video, the anime is at episode 969 and the manga at chapter 1010. It's ridiculous. And even after nearly 24 years, it's still going strong, if not stronger than ever. Breaking like a bajillion records along the way. It's crazy! But why? What is the reason behind its arguably unparalleled success and popularity? If you were to do a Google search, something along the lines of why is One Piece so popular or successful, you'll find a lot of videos, articles and forums listing the exact same 5 to 10 reasons. It's the characters, the plot, the world building, the art style, which is all true, don't get me wrong, they are right, but for me, it's more like scratching the surface rather than doing an in-depth analysis. Besides, when reading these articles, watching these videos, I couldn't help but think that all the creative effort that went into making these was something like pressing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V on your keyboard and then changing it so that the teacher wouldn't notice. Now, I'm not dissing on these creators, I'm not flexing or anything, we don't do that here. I'm merely pointing out the fact that I didn't find a single satisfying answer that would explain in detail the reason behind the success of One Piece. So let's, uh, let's change that. Before I get to what I believe is the real reason, I'm gonna go over some of the reasons that everyone talks about all the time. First up is characters. No doubt, One Piece has some of the most memorable and unique characters with well thought out backstories and fascinating character arcs that you just can't help but be invested in. With the Straw Hats themselves having some of the most riveting and iconic character writing in the shonen genre. Even the side characters are compelling and have captivating personalities. And on top of that, no single character is just randomly thrown in there. Everyone has a purpose and a part to play in the grand scheme of things. And no one is ever forgotten or sidelined. I think the best example of that would be Kobe. He first appeared in chapter 2 of the manga and episode 1 of the anime and had a small part to play in establishing the eccentric nature of Luffy's character and the initial world building. But even after literally hundreds of episodes, he is still relevant. And considering he is one of the very few allies Luffy has in the Marines, I reckon he has a huge part to play in the future, especially near the end. Next up is the plot. It's pretty straightforward. Luffy is a guy who goes out to sea to form a crew and become the king of pirates. Done deal. Basically every shonen out there. But when you throw in different factions such as pirates, the world government, the marines, the shichibukai, the yonko, the celestial dragons, the revolutionary army, it becomes an adventure of an unprecedented scale that covers the whole damn world. Now add some foreshadowing for good measure and not just timely foreshadowing that will play a big part in the next story arc, no. Sometimes Oda plants the seeds of story elements years ahead of time. Take Ryuo for example, a form of color of armament hockey that is introduced in the latest arc of the series, the Wano arc. But it was first shown in chapter 504. Of course at the time we didn't know what it was, but the fact that Oda set it up 12 years before it was properly introduced is just astounding. Another reason many people give is world building. 
In addition to many different locations and cultures and various different races of people and types of creatures found across the vast world of One Piece, we have a crap ton of mysteries. What happened during the lost century? Why does the world government want to keep it a secret? What is the will of D? Who was Joy Boy? And why does he also have a fucking straw hat? But the biggest mystery is undoubtedly the titular treasure One Piece. It's Luffy's final goal and we don't even know what it is. We know what a Hokage is, he's standing right there. We know what the symbol of peace looks like, it's this guy. We even know what a wizard king is. But we don't know just what the hell is One Piece. It adds an element of uncertainty. We don't know how it would be when Luffy finds the One Piece and becomes the pirate king. It's more exciting this way. We also have the art style of the manga, the sometimes good animation of the anime if you can get over the atrocious pacing of the second half, the unpredictability of the plot which I'll talk about later, and we also have the power scaling. All throughout its long run, One Piece has always had only two types of powers, devil fruits and hockey. Compared to other shonen, it's very simple and easy to keep tabs on and compare these powers. Also any and all growth of these characters is within the normal scope of their powers. For example, take Naruto who goes from a kid who can use shadow clone jutsu really well to a guy who gives literal alien gods a run for their money in 700 chapters, while Luffy goes from a kid who can use his rubber body to fight to a kid who can use his rubber body to fight really well in 1000 chapters. Now with that all out of the way, we move towards the actual secret, the real reason behind the success of One Piece. There's no roundabout way of doing this so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Drum roll, please. It's the way its arcs are structured. Man, it sounds really underwhelming and dumb when I say it like that. Okay, let me explain. When you look at the overall story of One Piece and the way it's delivered, you realize that it's written more like a modern epic than a typical shonen manga. Now what is an epic you might say? Well, an epic is a long poem, typically one derived from ancient oral tradition, narrating the deeds and adventures of heroic or legendary figures or the past history of a nation. Epics go way back, as far back as Homer's Iliad and Odyssey in ancient Greece. Some other examples you might be familiar with include Beowulf, Dante's Inferno, and King Arthur and the Knights of the Wrong Table. Modern epics are, as the name indicates, modern pieces of creative works written in the style of a traditional epic. However, modern epics are not necessarily in the format of a long poem. They could be a novel, a film, a TV series and of course, a manga. As long as it contains all the elements of an epic, it's good to go. The Lord of the Rings series and the Star Wars saga are some of the most well-known examples. Now does One Piece fit into this category? Well let's see if it contains all the elements of an epic. The first element of an epic is an undeniably good and strong hero. Well, there's no question here, Luffy's single defining characteristic is his unshakable good nature. And we all know how he keeps getting stronger and stronger throughout the entire series. And it not only applies to Luffy, but also the rest of the Straw Hats. Next up is superhuman feats, or deeds of extraordinary scale. Well, yeah, it's got that covered. I don't think I need to go into detail here. Next element is the presence of supernatural forces. For that we have the devil fruits and hockey. But in the context of an epic, we're talking about creatures such as gods and angels and demons. Now in One Piece, specifically when compared to the beginning, many of the characters that are introduced later in the series appear to be supernatural creatures. The bounty system is a great way of highlighting this. Luffy's first bounty was 30 million berries. Kaido's bounty is 4,611,100,000. If that's not supernatural, I don't know what is. Also look at the scene where Kaido is introduced. He jumps from a sky island to commit suicide and leaves unscathed. Bruh, that guy is a literal demon. Next up we have a vast setting. 
The setting of One Piece is literally the entire damn world, as I said before. Granted, most of it takes place on the Grand Line, but the events taking place in the rest of the world influence the story as well. So no problems there. Next up is overly stylized or exaggerated way of storytelling. This is one thing that One Piece does and does so well as compared to many other manga and anime. As for the overly stylized art style, it's right there. And as for the exaggeration, look at any scene in which a character cries. It's over the top ridiculous, but at the same time, it's really visceral. So yeah, that's another check. And finally, in medias res. It means in the middle of things. It is a staple of epics that the story of the protagonist starts in the middle of grand scheme of things. There is a rich history of the world that goes back centuries, even millennia before the start of the story. And sometimes even after its conclusion, the world itself goes on. In other words, we are exclusively told certain specific events which include the protagonist from its extensive history. One Piece also starts smack in the middle of the Great Pirate Era, and the history of the world goes back 1000 years. Moreover, that 1000 year old history is still relevant. It's one of the biggest mysteries of the story. Therefore, One Piece is definitely a modern epic. Now, epics are divided into parts. Homer's epics have 24 parts, and Milton's Paradise Lost has 12. Similarly, One Piece is divided into sagas, 9 as of now. Each saga is further subdivided into arcs. Now, these arcs are the point where its similarities with the modern epics come to an end, and the genius of Eiichiro Oda begins. Because these arcs are the reason why One Piece has been a long-running successful shonen series. The way these arcs are written. So what exactly is the thing that makes Oda's storytelling so special? Well, I'll give you six things. Here's six things that make One Piece arcs so addicting. That sounds stupid. Thing number one, agency. Now, simply put, Agency is the ability of a character to influence the plot. Name any event in all of One Piece universe and I'll give you the name of the person or persons who were the agents of its initiation. Take the death of Ace for example. Why does Ace die? Well, because the Navy wants to execute him because he's the son of the former Pirate King. So how did he get caught? Well, he was fighting Blackbeard and Blackbeard handed him over to the Marines to become a Shichibukai. Well, why was he fighting Blackbeard? Because he is a traitor who killed his crewmate and stole his devil fruit, okay? So why does he want to become a Shichibukai? Well, so he would be present when Whitebeard shows up to save Ace. Well, why would Whitebeard come to save Ace? Because he considers all his crewmates to be his sons, so he naturally comes to save his son. You see where I'm going with this? Every single story thread can be traced back to its agent. And in case of a new story arc, almost all of the time, it's the straw hats that cause a change in the established status quo. Them going to the next place itself is the cause of that change. Thing number two, splitting up. As soon as things start to move after the introduction of the new setting and characters at the beginning of an arc, the straw hats split up. They might go individually or in groups, it may be deliberate or accidental, there's something different in every arc. However, they do indeed split up in each and every single arc. Now in this way, there becomes a lot more space to add different story threads. Every single character has to do some important thing, and that thing adds to the plot of the arc. And not a single character seems like they are least bit useless. Now, of course, this is not found in some of the early arcs because they have a very different structure. Thing number three, personal arcs. After the Straw Hats split up, every single individual or group is given a sort of a mini arc. They have to do one thing or the other in order to succeed against whatever weird pirate they are facing. The best thing about this is how these mini arcs converge near the end of the arc and form a single cohesive story thread. Thing number four, growth. Now during these mini arcs, many of the Straw Hats, if not all who have split up, have to face personal demons or a hurdle in order to achieve their goal. And as a result of that, 
they either become stronger as a character or obtain a new power or ability. Think Zoro getting Shusui after defeating Ryuma in Thriller Bark, or Nami befriending Zeus after facing Big Mom in the Whole Cake Island arc, or Usopp and Luffy fighting in Water 7 arc, or Usopp coming back as Soge King in Ennius Lobby. Thing number 5. Overall Plot now, these arcs don't just tell a self-contained story. The clues about the mysteries of the world and the progression of the overall plot are also an integral part of these arcs. The Poneglyphs, Laugh Tale Island, The Void Century, etc, etc. This keeps things interesting and also gives a sense of progression to the overall story. Thing number 6. Unpredictability. If you say One Piece is predictable or that you could tell what was gonna happen next in every single arc or that you could smell every single plot twist coming from a mile away, then I don't care who you are, you are lying. If you ask me what is the one single thing One Piece has going for it in terms of storytelling, the one thing that it does right every single time, then in my personal opinion, I would say it's the unpredictability of the story of every single arc. Despite having literally thousands of movies and anime and TV shows under my belt after 30 years of my life, One Piece still keeps me second guessing and manages to surprise me. Which is something you experience less and less of as you keep exposing yourself to more and more anime and movies. This is how unpredictable its story is. Now when you add all of these factors and put them together in one arc and do this for every single arc, it never gets boring. It stays fresh even if it goes on for 24 years. So many things happen at the same time that keep you invested and you can't stop reading or watching. It's borderline addicting. This is the genius of Eiichiro Oda, how he has kept the series fresh during its unbelievably long run. This is the reason why it's been successful after all those years. Now I'm not saying that it's the best anime slash manga out there in the history of ever. No, it has its flaws, especially the anime with its unbearable pacing like I said before. But after watching this video, I really hope you will be able to appreciate the effort and thought that Oda has put into making One Piece an entertaining shonen series and keeping it fresh for more than two decades, which is a testament to his raw skill and ability as a master storyteller and a proficient writer. And with that, we've made it to the end of the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.